Uh, so my name is Jim, Jim Wright. Uh, you know, Bart was nice enough to think that I was a good enough tire to uh, try this on our maiden voyage. So uh, I appreciate that, Bart. And, and, uh, <coughs> well, I hope this little bug, this, this bug is called, a, I call it a fuzzy minnow. It's uh, got a marabou tail and, uh, and it's got a brush for uh, a body and then a, a synthetic fiber head. And then uh, we trim it down to get the shape that it's in now. Was, you know, so it, look, it kinda looks like, kinda looks like this <laughs> before you trim it down. And you could fish it like that if you want, but uh, for our purposes tonight, I'll trim it down for you. And then uh, the eyes are uh, tab eyes. So they're just they're a little adhesive eyes and uh, you wrap them, wrap the front end to secure them. And uh, it, that way it, there's no weight to this thing. It's the weight is whatever the water holds on it. Um, so let's see. Uh, so we'll start with the hook. I'm using a, a one-aught hook. It's uh, using these hooks, the A-Rex Predators, one-aught. Um, hey Jim, could I interrupt you for a second? Of course. Hey uh, Tucker, are you there? Uh, Tuck, Tucker McElroy? Yeah. You hear us? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, were you able to uh, hear uh, hear us tell you how to pin the? Uh... Got everything. Okay. You're you're good. Good. All right. Sorry to interrupt you, Jim. That's all right. So yeah, so yeah, it's just a stinger hook, and uh, these materials you don't have to, you know, whatever. It, it's it's subjective, you know. You, you you could probably build a similar fly using slightly different materials, so it's not set in stone. But you know, any stinger hook will work, like the B10S style will work as well. You know, I mean, I'm using it for bass, so I'm using a a, a wide gape, and then the trusty 8089s. Are good um, so whatever works you know uh, let's see then I got uh, marabou so I use the strong marabou um, this happens to be UV but it doesn't have to be UV I just had it in my box and uh, as a backup we can do extra select and uh, when I do the extra select I, I rip a side off and then kind of tail it on that way um, and it, it goes fast, so I can I can tie both ways. And then uh, an option is also bucktail for a tail. Uh, and then the so these are the brushes I'm using. It's a uh, Jim. If you want us to see the material, <clears throat> if you want us to see the material, hold it right in front of the fly, between the fly and the camera. There you go. Like this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, now we can see the material, yeah. the brand and everything. Yeah, maybe start anew, if you don't mind. No, that's all right. Oh, okay. But, you know, <laughs> it, it, yeah, so, you're yeah. doing great. It's just uh, to get it in the camera picture when you're pinned like this, you got to hold it right. Okay. I was using the camera on the iPad, but yeah, this is better. Yeah. Good all right. Um, yeah, this is the brush. It's a two-inch brush. Uh, just add water or just add H2O. It's out of focus. Just add H2O, and this is uh, the shrimp color. Um, yeah, no, uh, what? It, you know, uh, I found these at Mad River. Not, no endorsement here, but I found them at Mad River Outfitters online. Um, for like six bucks, you get two brushes, and I, I'm able to get uh, four flies out of two brushes, and then. Uh, this is it. This the synthetic hair I was talking about. Is uh, I'm using. Uh, what the hell? I'm having an Alzheimer's moment. It's like EP fiber, but it's the Fly Tires Dungeon version of EP fiber. It's called uh, Congo hair, I think. Um, but it, it 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 functions exactly the same way. So, um, here we go. <laughs> Put our hook in the. If you want, if you want to smash the barb, you can. If you don't want to, then live dangerously. That's why I'm going to, I'm going to live dangerously. So I, I just wrap the whole hook.
Oh, and I'm used to, uh, this is uh, 140 denier uh, UTC thread. No, no GSP required. <laughs> uh, all right, so then uh, just do a tail with the marabou. I usually use two marabous. And I uh, put them together uh, so they're, they're like looking at each other. Uh, you know, like the concave end of them. Uh, right. You know how the you know how the feather kind of lays uh, concave or convex. So I, I put it so the concave are facing each other. Um, and then just kind of line up the stems rip off a little bit for an anchor and then yeah, the length of the tail is about one and a half because it's all about the tail Just pin it down with a few wraps and then trim trim off the bullshit. Oh, pardon. Should I not swear? <laughs> All right. And then I'll clean it up. And then, uh, oh, I, I didn't mention the flash. Use a little bit of tinsel uh, or flash boo. Uh, Yeah, you know, I like I like using red because um, there's really it's the only red in the whole fly, and uh, and I'm kind of generous with it, so probably a a hank of at least ten strands, and then uh, I tie it. And you find the middle point, and then uh, the middle point of the hank. Lock it down with a couple wraps. And then take the front and fold it back. And then lock everything down. And there's that. And then uh, you just kind of angle cut the end of it just a little longer than the the marabou. So now, now the fun part starts. Or are you going after the going after this stuff? So the the brush is probably I don't know maybe a foot long. Yeah, it's probably a foot long. <laughs> and I, uh, I take the end. Uh, take the end and I clean it. Trim off a little bit of the fiber from the stem, so you get a, a clean tie spot. You know, there, something like that. That's, you know, I don't know, quarter, maybe three eighths of an inch long, and put it right on top and lock her down. And then run my thread all the way to the front. Well, not all the way to the front. You want to stop at least three, maybe three hook eyes back. You want to leave room to uh, work that synthetic head on. And uh, stroke, stroke the fibers so they're nice and bushy. And then pull them back. If you got a rotary vise, you can spin it. But I, I just like wrapping it. I feel like I have a little more control. I'm gonna wrap just where wherever um, where the where the thread is right now. So stop it like three eyes short of the front.
Just a quick mention here, I guess uh, somebody's having a problem with background noise, so if everybody could please mute their microphone, that'd be appreciated for now. Then when you have a question, go ahead and unmute it. Uh, yeah, so I locked it down with a couple, just a couple of quick wraps and kind of stroke everything back and give it a couple of good tight wraps. So, so you have some like this here. And then this will get all, uh, when we're done, we'll brush it all out and then give it a haircut. Um, so now, now we we'll use the the synthetic stuff. So I don't know if, if you guys have worked with this stuff before. You uh, you kind of know what to do. But for those of you that haven't, less is more. <laughs> so uh, uh, you know you stretch it tight, and you want it to be like maybe a little bigger than an eighth inch, and you cut yourself a the whole hank, so the whole hank is maybe eight inches long. And then we're gonna cut that in half. And save the save half of it, we're gonna use everything. And then you tie, the, uh, tie it onto the hook in the middle, of the middle of the hank, <laughs> just like two wraps, quick wraps. And then if you have a rotary vise, flip her upside down. If you don't have a rotary vise, just put it on the underneath. <laughs> and you're gonna rinse and repeat here. Okay, so so now, so now look, so now you're gonna take this, all this you're gonna we're gonna fold everything back over itself and then lock it down. Uh, just a couple wraps, don't have to go crazy. You kind of stroke it back, stroke all the fibers back. And then, then we're, it's like, then it's rinse and repeat with the head. You know, going after about the same size, uh, same size hank. There's uh, there's a little trick to this is you, you start kind of tapering the size of your hank. So, like, so these two are the same size, but um, as as you build up the head, you take uh, like take your oh, I'll show you in a second. <laughs> take your hanks and just cut them in half. Cut the halves in half as you get closer to the head. And then you kind of build up a nice looking taper. The guys on YouTube make it look so easy. You see how quickly the eye gets, or the head of the fly gets ate up. I don't know. Should have had a white background all along. But yeah, so 
I'm starting to get dangerously close to the head there. So we're going to do another quarter hank, a couple of quarter hanks. So now, you, now we really want to lock it in here, multiple thread wraps. So there, there's that. Okay, so now all we got left um, are the eyes. We keep pulling on it because you get a lot of loose fibers. But those will come off as you brush it as well. Um, so this is this is a little tricky part. So a, a half hitch. Because the eye, what's going to happen with the eyes? Okay, so I, I use these these tab eyes. Let me show you the package. Um, Pro tab eyes, or um, there you go. Pro tab eyes. Um, and they're uh, this is what the logo looks like. So the, <clears throat> these things are. You know, they're just adhesive eyes. Um, as a as an alternative, you can use jungle cock eyes if you like, um, or or imitation jungle cock eyes. The jungle, you know, I don't know, jungle cocks are like really pricey. <laughs> um, yeah, but I found these from Spirit River jungle imitation eyes, and they're virtually the same kind of product. Just a tab, you know. You, you you just stick them on the stick them on there. Um, here, so so here's the trick with this is. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm jumping the gun here. So the trick with this is, you had a half hitch of the thread off, so now so now you got to trim it. Um, so you you can cut the thread and try to wind it back on. Um, I find that to be a little hard, so so you just start trimming. So I'll give you a look at the finish again. So I mean that that's kind of what I'm going after. So it's pretty tight, and then uh, try not to cut your thread. If you want to take it off the vise, it's a lot easier. But I'm uh, I left it on the vise for the purposes of our video.
You know, if any, any of you all tied that uh, game changer fly, um, the techniques in the game changer fly are very similar to what we're doing here. You just, you know, obviously there's no, uh, when you have all the links and the articulation. But uh, this little guy hunts. The bass think it's a healthy meal. <clears throat> so, all right, so there's uh, so you, you want to, we want to trim it before we put the eyes on. Uh, like I said, uh, it's easier to trim it taking it off the vise, but I recommend to leave, you know, half inch of the thread, leave it on, and then take it out of the, out of the hook and work, work your magic with the scissors. Um, okay, <clears throat> so it's eye, it's eye time. So you gotta, I put the tab over the thread wraps. Smoking. Um, it's steam when I did so. You just kind of, you just kind of mash it in there, and it'll, it'll stick good enough to tie it up. And if you don't like the placement, you can always uh, move them around. Ready to lash these down. And that is that. So now we whip finish. And there's our there's our bug. So from here you can embellish. With uh, with marker, if you like, uh, you know, paint it up. However, if you want to, I mean, this is obviously all white with with a little bit of red in there. I know that this little camera, this you know, that got the close up, um, it doesn't represent the colors very well. But you can see in the, the the larger picture that it's white. So I use uh, this little prism marker. Uh, this is kind of a greenish olive color. And uh, just dial up the, the back of it, give it a dark back. So it's kind of like a shiner. Or some kind of bait fish. This is the ISA, they're, they go to Zoom meeting. And I'm up here. <laughs> and that is a fuzzy minnow. If you guys, if you guys all have any questions, it's a quick tie. I like quick ties. I don't want to like to be able to crank out a bunch of flies because I usually they I usually decorate trees with them, so <laughs> it's good to have extras. Oh, uh, hey Jim. Uh, yeah, Bart here. Uh, that it's really a beautiful fly. Thanks. Uh, uh, it's incredible, you know, how you were able to sculpt that from the uh, its original shape. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it just takes a little practice. I mean, uh, it's you know, I'm not like I appreciate your your kind words, but you know, I'm not like a, I'm no pro tire. I, I <laughs> tie up twelve of these, and they all look just a little different. <laughs> how how would you uh, recommend that this be uh, fished? 
Oh, uh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I fish it on a floating line. Uh, it gets wet enough that it'll it'll uh, act kind of like a, a muddler, where it'll uh, you know it'll break the surface of the water and get under about a foot or so, and it uh, quick short strips get, to get it to dart. It'll dart a lot. Um, you can swing it as well, I guess, right? So can, yeah, yeah, um, you can definitely swing it. I mean, you can work it just pretty much like any streamer as you would any streamer mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's not uh you can do it on a sinking line if you want to you know get into some deeper water uh or you know and it absorbs the water too it'll get, it'll get a little heavy uh, it, it gets pretty heavy um so you know i wind up uh give them a squeeze just to get the water out so it, so they're just a little easier to cast uh Yeah, I bet the smallmouth you love it, you know. They do. Uh -huh. I kind of, I kind of stumbled on this. I, I, uh, you know, I want, like I said about the game changer fly. It, the techniques are very similar to that, and then um, also with the uh, synthetic fibers, the very uh, those techniques. Um, and I kind of deployed both of them. I just, I don't know, it just came to me one day. I was like, hey. And there it is. I mean, and then I was really satisfied when when they got eight, you know, because <laughs> I had no idea how they would work. I mean, I got them wet and put them in the sink and kind of let them see see how they looked all wet. They uh, when the marabou gets wet, it gets real thin, you know. Uh, but the the synthetic stuff the um, stays pretty fat, so it. Um, it looks really good underwater, <laughs> you know. I bet. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like color-wise, we can – I don't know if you guys were keeping up with me tying or if you're just watching, whatever. I can uh, – I mean, color-wise, we can we can go anywhere with the color. So, that, you know, obviously this is like a bait fish color. Um uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I could. We could tie up another one. You know, colors are purely subjective, as with any bug. You know, I mean, you could do a bluegill color, sunny sunfish color, crawdad color. At this point in time, did any of our participants have any any questions? Yeah, I've got one, Jim. Um, yeah. The synthetic stuff you use to to do the head, yeah. What what would you call that again? Oh, it's uh well, it, the stuff I'm using is called Congo hair. Oh, okay. And it's from uh, the Fly Tires Dungeon. Okay, doc. He's got an online store. He um, he's a great resource because he makes his stuff, I guess, and uh and he sells it to shops at wholesale, but we can buy it as fly tires. Um, for like pennies on the dollar almost or maybe dimes on the dollar anyway <laughs> but uh yeah because like ep fibers are like you know eight or ten bucks for like a big hank of it like you know like this mm -hmm. um and then fly tire I, I buy like a like a big combo pack it's got probably eight packs of this hair oh, wow. and eyes in it and uh rubber legs it's like a streamer pack it's got a whole a bunch of stuff in there um, and it's like, I don't know, 48 bucks or something. <laughs> uh -huh. I never, you know, I buy, I'll buy a, a pack like that. I, I got, I think it's lasted me three years now. <laughs> yeah. Just keep like finding stuff in there. Hey, what's that? <laughs> you, that you know, so yeah. that's, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you want, we could spin up another one. I mean, you guys got any more questions? Well, I don't have any questions, Jim, but don't cut yourself short. That was a really nice time. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Really appreciate that. It's really nice. Oh, you know, it's kind of a quick fly. You can color any color you want. You, you can't have to worry yeah. about something you spent two hours on. It's oh, yeah. Really I mean, neat. Thanks a lot. Oh, of course. Yeah. Have you ever tried tying a little bit of weight towards the back of the fly? I've never put weight on it. Um, the one thing I considered... Uh, 
Oh, it was uh, bending the hook. Was it, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that one. It's uh, the swimming jimmy. Have you ever heard of that thing? It's, uh, it's like an articulated fly that a guy out in Colorado makes it. Uh, Gallup, Kerry Gallup, Kelly Gallup, you know. <laughs> but, man, that thing it was like, holy crap. There's like, I don't know, like five materials and a joint, you know, it's articulated. And, yeah, but uh, I was thinking if I bent the hook that it would get even more you know, that uh, kind of walk the dog thing, you know, the twi like, like you would, uh, like you would twitch a jerk minnow or something, you know, we have that, cause it, I mean, that's what the, seems like that's what bass like is that, you know, when a minnow spazzes out and then stops, <laughs> they're like, hey, it's dinner time, you know, but uh, yeah, so, um, I'll tie up like a, a sunfish version. You could, you know, something maybe you could use in a pond for largemouth. Um, so I, I don't, I have uh, the the select uh, marabou instead of the an olive. So I was going to make an olive tail. That's the other thing I like to do is uh, you can combine two colors because I use I use two uh, marabous. But um, Trying to give you a little contrast, but yeah. So I take the uh, the marabou off the side of these extra select ones, you know. So you kind of get this going on. <laughs> you just kind of build up a tail. And uh, doing it this way, you gotta you gotta really build it up more because you don't have the stems, and and they're not uh, you can't really like line up the whole feather. But it's, it's kind of a way to use what you got. Let's say you just you just strip it off, and then uh, kind of line up. Try to line up the butts of these little. Feather, I don't know, what do you call one piece of marabou? Like, like this, what do you call that? <laughs> what do you call that? I don't know. A stem? A st maybe a stem. The uh, individual fibers are referred to as barbules. Barbules, there you go. Leave it to John. <laughs> Lots of useless information. There you go. Fingers. Not, not so useless that time though. But uh, yeah, so yeah, you get those, kind of rip the barbules off the stem. And then, uh, you know, use, use, I use a, a lot of them because it, you know, like I said, it take, takes more of these to make a nice tail. I kind of like that, it's work, it'll work. Snip off the There's that. I'm getting my red tinsel. Yeah, but um, I've, I've fished this fly on a lot of different waters. Uh, you know, I used it on our ISA trip up at Menominee River. Those fish seem to like it. They fished it on the Kankakee River. Those fish liked it. Uh, fished it on the Rock River. Those fish liked it. Uh, we had a lot of success with it. As a fly angler, I don't need to tell you guys, Like it's like one of the greatest rewards is fooling a fish with one of your creations. Okay, so now 
So I'm going to pick a different color of, uh, of my, my brush. Got a, what color is this? Chartreuse. Because it ain't no use if it ain't chartreuse. But it's that same, uh, same manufacturer as the, as the first one. Just add H2O. Made in South Africa of all places. And then, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, the same routine, uh, you know, trim you off, clean you off an area to tie in on. Cut that, cut that a little long <laughs> and folding it back. And then when you run it all the way, you know, run it, run it forward. So you have room to put the head on. And we're wrapping and doing this routine again. You had a, uh, During our pandemic here, I was, uh, was off work a lot this summer, so I fished a lot of uh, fished a lot of my local waters. Uh, I live on the north side of Chicago, so I went out on the Des Plaines River a bunch of times with my kayak. And uh, those little pike on the on the <laughs> Des Plaines River. It don't seem to be much bigger than about 16 inches, but they even liked eating this fly. And they caught me by surprise the first, my first outing, and I had no bite leader, so I lost a whole mess of these. Head. So I so I have that same Congo hair, but I found some in orange in my box. So it really look wow, that really looks orange on my on the camera. <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be the same process, man. A little you know, a little bit goes a long way. And uh, we use that for a head, to make kind of make a bluegill deal or a sunfish. How am I doing with like my camera angle and stuff like that? Can you like see what I'm doing? Looks fine here in Rockford. <laughs> Thank you for that, Terry. Yeah, no problem. Did you get any snow today in Rockford? Not yet. I'm getting ready for tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I guess we did this morning. Yeah, it snowed just a whisper this morning. We got about two inches. Yeah, but it all melted though. Here we're supposed to get over six tomorrow. Six? Oh, man. Better get out of town. <laughs> Are you what heading back to Bloomington, Jim? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be heading back to Bloomington. Go back to work Tuesday.
So what's uh, what's interesting is with when you you have the contrast of colors, you can really see um, how that head just de develops as you keep tying on. Just in case anybody's wondering, well, if you can see that we got 54 days until spring. <laughs> All right. So better get those flies tied up. That's right. Those hungry bass will like the uh, bluegill color. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have many color variations. That way you can be like Tom Lou and, you know, catch, <laughs> three, catch three fish on one color and then switch to another color and catch five more. There you go. Yeah, sometimes that's all it takes, you know. You fish the same bait in a different color and they're like, hey, somebody else came to dinner. Mm hmm I mean, it holds true with, you know, using – like grub tails or whatever, you know. I was fishing uh, this hot water lake downstate. Uh, it's named Powerton Lake. This was many years ago, but me and my buddy fishing it, and he uh, he was using white, I was using yellow, and he was catching, and I wasn't. And I switched to yellow, and then I started catching. And then we both stopped catching, and then we both switched to white, and we started catching again. So th th this technique of tying this on is uh, for those of you that uh, want to dabble in uh, deer hair, spinning deer hair, uh, that little three finger pull and holding everything back, that's uh, that technique will do you, serve you well in spinning deer hair. Just ask Corey Gale. <laughs> He showed me everything I know about deer hair. I'm kind of running out of hook here. Stop. <laughs> you know maybe i mean like i don't know i never tried not trimming it but some i don't know sometimes i don't know how you guys are but sometimes i look at stuff in my vice and I'm like well what's wrong with it like this <laughs> put some eyes on it and throw it in there but it, uh, it's hard to it's like, uh, see, it's kind of thin. This one came out a little thin. Um, but we'll, I'll trim it anyway. Yeah. That would be more like a bluegill, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you left it kind of with that wide profile. Mm -hmm. 
But I guess, you know, I don't, um, I'm going to go ahead and trim it anyway. Oh, Lefty Cray, I remember watching some videos with him. I never met him or nothing, but he always said, yeah, there's no, use plenty of saliva. <laughs> You know that I'm laughing because uh, this little can't, you know, I don't know, whatever. <clears throat> the lighting, it, it makes the colors look so different in that little camera. It, it looks way better in this little camera than it does in person. <laughs> yeah, you need the wider shot to really see what it looks like. Well, it's just the lighting, you know, the, I don't know, there's that weird orange hue. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, there's that. So then we put some eyes on. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put some of these uh, imitation jungle cock eyes on. Just to keep everything mixed up here. Just when you thought you had it dialed in. I'm going to change it up on you. So the, the jungle cock eyes are what... Uh, Or what, uh, what's that one? Uh, I can't remember what that one fly is called. Uh, a hollow eye or something? Or... A different look to it. Okay. We can whip finish this guy. Put them in the fly box. There it is. Uh, yeah, so they, so they, uh, you know, if you want to paint it up, we can paint it up. I'm kind of freestyling now. <laughs> Make the back a little darker than the bottom. There it is. I kind of like it. Nice job. No, thanks. 
Uh, see, it's the the shadow of me and the fly is more representative of the color. Hold it there. Hold it there. Got you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. And I usually fish. Uh, uh, I usually fish a seven weight rod. That's kind of my go-to. Uh, uh, unless the I know that the waters are going to demand bigger bugs or windy conditions or something. Uh, but yeah, seven. You know, I throw these with a seven weight with no issues. I've thrown them with a six weight. It's, when they get really wet, then it get, they get a little heavy for a six weight, but it's manageable. Just got a just got a haul like crazy. <laughs> The double haul will be your friend in that regard. Um, that's it, man. Very nice, Jim. Thanks. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, yeah, uh, who was it, Larry? Larry, yeah. Yeah, this is your first uh, first uh, outing, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I hope, hope I see you in person at another outing. Uh, I definitely plan on it once we get our shots and, you know, everything's a little safer. Right on, man. Right on. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know. And, uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, where's my notes? I took notes. Mark told me to take notes. Hey, Jim, uh, this is our, you know, as you know, this is our first tie, and, and thank you very much for uh, for uh, doing this for us uh, tonight. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to maybe uh, doing this more in the future. Uh, yeah. If anyone has any ideas or uh, thoughts about uh, doing a tie in the future, you know, please let us know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it's really fun. It, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I'm a little nervous. I was nervous coming in, but uh, I mean, once you start tying, you're just tying, you know. Yeah. Well, we had a really good turnout tonight. We had 12 people at one oh, time. Oh, that's wonderful. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, really appreciate everyone coming on board. Yeah, uh, appreciate the interest. I mean, uh, you know, that's that's the one great thing about this club. Everybody is, uh, you know, there's there's like there's no secrets really. I mean, every, you know, you ask a guy a trick or what he's, what's he doing or whatever. And they and they tell you, you know. I was uh, except maybe Eugene. He doesn't wanna, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to he likes to hold his uh, <laughs> hold it close to the cuff, whatever. But no, yeah. But this is a great club, and I'm glad to be part of it. And I was glad to help out tonight. So, well, you know, uh, you mentioned that you're going to be down in Bloomington, in the Bloomington yeah. area, and of course, Van is uh, in Champaign. He knows oh, okay. the water's uh, down there, so you guys ought to uh, exchange numbers and, uh, you know. Yeah, we should hook up, out. man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to hopefully float for some white bass this spring uh, oh. and get Bart to come down. Oh, right on, man. Yeah, I've never done that. I'd love oh, to do it's, that. It's a blast when they're on. Right. What? What? Uh, what's the creek you go on? Uh, the Kaskaskia. Oh, gotcha. Just, it's like just by, north uh, Shelbyville. Shelby. Yeah, right on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd never done that. That'd yeah. be that'd be incredible. What time of year is that, Van? That's usually kind of mid to late April into middle of May. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So pretty. So the early bite, but it, yeah, depends on the weather. Depends on the weather. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, very good, man. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll uh, I'll hit you up on. Uh, I'll send you a private message through the forum, Van. Okay. With my number Sounds on good. There. And then we can uh, get in contact that way. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, my neighbor and me, go up to Dawson Lake quite a bit and, and fish in the spring. Where Dalton Lake? Dawson. Dawson. Oh, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. It, that's that, near that, Bloomington, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, uh, Evergreen Lake's on my uh, on my short bucket list. It's supposed to be a really good musky lake. Like you could lose a lot of flies trying to catch bass, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know the, the bite off is almost as exciting as landing them sometimes. You know, but uh, anyway, well, thanks so much for uh, inviting me to do this, Bart. Thank, thank you, Jim. Did Did anyone else have any questions before we uh, depart for the evening? 
All right. Well, this will uh, conclude our first uh, official Zoom tie. Thank you very much, Jim. Oh, no, you're welcome, man. Thanks. Really Great appreciate job, it, Jim. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All I for appreciate joining it. us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for everybody for joining in. Have a have a good uh, well have a good week and have a great spring and the rest of the winter. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thank Jim. You.